All right, we're with Captain Mayor Peter Gidry here. Then, and that and mayor goes a long way too uh, here at the motor pool. Captain's in charge of the motor pool. Now he's in charge of the campsite. Uh, but what a job y'all have done uh, with all these camps. And well, y'all got it up pretty quick, didn't you? Definitely. That was a main priority for the sheriff. Um, whenever 32 of his employees end up losing their homes or severely destroyed, he had in his heart, he said, you know what? I'm not losing my people to anywhere else, so I'm going to make something happen. And he came up with the idea, of course, you know, he's a Marine, so he said overcome and adapt. And he came with this idea of putting this camp together and the amount he got it done in so quickly, it, it was amazing. And, and he was passionate about it and he didn't take no for an answer and he went about it himself and got it done. And, and I see y'all had to run water lines, electrical everywhere, and it's uh, pretty well laid out, but I guess you never know what the parking lot's gonna be used for, right? Correct. Yeah, during the storm, we originally made this as a shell parking lot for resources coming in, because it was people from all over the state and the country came here to help us bring in resources. We had to have a parking spot, so whenever that ended up kind of slowing down, it's just, hey, look, perfect spot. It's already my property and everything's temporary, so that falls with the FEMA regulation. So he said, let's make it happen, and he did. How many uh, motorhomes do we have in here? We have 29 he brought in. 29? Yeah. Wow. And tell me what it was like. I know you're in charge of the motor pool, and that's why they give you the, the nickname Mayor, but how was it having this thrown in in the mix? So, you know, with uh, storms, especially in Louisiana, South Louisiana, you never know what happens with a storm. And Ida came and smacked us around. He said, hey, guess what? Sheriff said, hey, I got a new task for you. I'm like, what is that? He goes, you're going to run this town. I'm like, R run the town. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we take it one lick at a time, and uh, we stood up and took the challenge and made it happen. Now, I saw a little damage on your motor pool, too. So uh, you all trying to deal with that at the same time? Yeah, definitely. So this is our main headquarters because obviously downtown had some water damage. So mm -hmm. our motor pool took about a third of the roof, flew off of it. Um, so we kind of made central operations here. Um, it was tough, and especially with the rains we had after the storm happened, we got rained on a little bit. Um, but we made it happen. We got a temp roof up, and, and now we're moving into the next phase of getting it fixed permanently and then keeping the town running. So the deputies are staying here. I mean, their whole families are in there? Yes, uh, deputies are here, and, and the sheriff's philosophy is if where your family's at, you're going to stay, and his main thing is keeping kids back to normalcy, and that's what he's done. And I bet you'll see a few kids out here every now and then uh, playing around. Oh, definitely, and that's what makes the sheriff actually smile, seeing the kids play. Don't know other deputies' families, but kids always gel together, and he's happy, they're happy. Yeah, now what's the inside look like? Describe the inside of them for me. So it's pretty much a, it's a small house is what it is. They have a, a kitchen, a stove. Um, refrigerator, they got bunk beds for kids, um, like a queen bed and then a sofa kind of living area and, and a TV and it's pretty much it's, it's a new home. We always say welcome home when they come here. It's a temporary home until you get yours back up and running. But Captain, I got to be honest, you, you seem like the perfect personality to adapt to doing what you normally do. The sheriff uh, gives you another task, he, he does it, but you seem pretty chipper like you just took the ball and ran with it. Definitely, and that's what everybody, I was, especially during a storm, everybody you could see the, the kind of dis, dismay in their face or, or just kind of there, were, there was no hope. And I would wear a goofy hat some days, just wear a different shirt, just to kind of get the morale up a little bit. And the sheriff being what he is, he was here every day giving little words of advice, and I would just kind of be behind him making people smile and laugh. And that's what I adopted the name of mayor, and it kind of makes people chuckle. And his philosophy in speaking with him is that I think they were sending deputies as far as Baton Rouge. But if you send in a deputy to Baton Rouge from other areas, chances are they may just set up shop there and want to work there. So if you set up their home where their home really is, they're staying here. Correct. And that was this big thing. We had 10% of our department that lost homes. And that's, for Terrebonne Parish, that's, that's a big hit to our department. And he said, you know what, just what you said, if somebody moves somewhere else to take up temporary housing in Baton Rouge, they're going to get a custom there. The family's going to find jobs, and then guess what you lose? You lose another trained officer that can't patrol the streets, and that wasn't acceptable to him. So when the families come and the deputies, they live here, now they're able to focus back on their job because before, obviously, if, if you're on patrol and your home is missing a roof or if it doesn't exist anymore and you have a family staying out of town with some somebody else to be quite blunt and that's reality, your mind's not totally going to be in the job. 
correct. And that was a stress that deputies had here. And that was one stress he said he can bear that burden. He said, I'm going to take care of that, take this challenge, and I'm going to make sure my guys don't have to worry about where their families are at, where their families are sleeping, give them some place they can call a temporary home, and then they keep working. And we haven't skipped a beat since day one after the storm. We've been running 100 percent, and with the sheriff's help like this, we continue to run 100 percent. Well, Captain, Mayor, we appreciate <laughs> you joining us. And uh, keep on smiling and, and passing that goodwill to people because uh, it suits you well and you're doing a great job. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. There we go. The mayor, the captain over here, Peter Guidry. And we're waiting on the sheriff. He's going to give us a little more of an update also on the philosophy and how he was able to get this done because, let's face it, a lot of people are trying to get this done, but they can't. He maneuvered and he did some different things, and we're going to talk with him how he was able to make this happen. It'll be right around the break. Don't go away. Of course, no introduction, but we'll do it anyway. The sheriff of Terrebonne Parish, Tim Saunier, and I've interviewed you about a lot of things so far, but a camper city, and I was telling the captain, the mayor, like you call him, <laughs> that's hard to put together because there's a lot of bureaucracy to get this done. You were able to do it. How were you able to pull that off? Well, um, Congressman Garrett Graves, he had wrote a bill in 2016-15 when they had to flood in, uh, in Livingston Parish. Um, that bill allowed the sheriff there to do very similar circumstances because he had a lot of his officers displaced. So when I realized we had 32 of our officers that were displaced, I talked to the um, sheriff there, and I talked to Garrett Graves, the congressman, and uh, and th there was a, basically a consultant. I was able to seek some consultants that assisted with that situation, mm -hmm. and uh, we were able to bring it to life here. Yeah. And uh, I was able to navigate, and, I, and we were able to get them and purchase through my office with some emergency funds that I had, and I will get my 100% reimbursement from FEMA. Mm -hmm. So we have to work through the back channels to get our money, mm -hmm. like everybody else is trying to do up front to get campers. The state had to do something similar with uh, FEMA to get the campers, which you see coming. Mm -hmm. But um, I was able to kind of speed the process up because I was able to make the purchase myself. And I, I would assume after it's all said and done and, and the deputies relocate, which you'd probably have an auction or something, you'd probably have to give correct. the money back to FEMA. That's exactly correct. It's 100% reimbursement, so I'm getting 100% reimbursement on this, mm -hmm. this uh, project, which took care of my officers. And there's several reasons why, but uh, so I'll get my money. Once that happens, then uh, we have to put these up for auction, and that money will be returned to FEMA. But my cost is covered 100%. Now, I saw the concern on your face. Obviously, it was very heartfelt when you were on the desk with me. And your main concern was that the deputies had no place more for their families because if a deputy is out on patrol and doesn't really know where his family is going to end up, he can't do his job right. It's weighing on his mind. So I, I know this was paramount to you. It, w it was very important to me. Um, you know, with 32, you know, I have about 305 employees, and so 10% of my department is now displaced. Um, I can say this. They didn't miss work. They continued to work through the storm, considering it's like, what am I going to do? Where am I going to put my family? Where am, where am I going to stay? Um, this was able to take a lot of burden off of our officers for us to be able to do this. Um, you have some other first responders in the parish, um, firefighters and all, and the closest place they were able to find to live was like Baton Rouge and in Lafayette. And to me, that's uh, a long way. And in what we've seen in the past, and I've talked to other agencies that uh that suffered devastation and they end up losing a lot of their manpower because when they move away they don't come back mm -hmm. i want our people to come back right you've been down every bayou we filmed down every bayou you could obviously see the footprint of this storm east to west gets a little less damage as you move to the western part of terrebonne parish but uh half of lafouche and half of terrebonne parish just got mangled by these eye walls and uh you saw a lot didn't you Oh, it's, it's, it's devastating for our parish, and what was important that I can keep my people working so we can continue to help the people down those bayous. And, I mean, even today um, we're, cooking, we're cooking a meal in gray for some of the um, areas, even in some of the northern end of the parish. Yeah. That was, uh, dev so we're, we're not forgetting anybody in the parish, and we just want to continue supporting 
the rebuild. We want to continue to support our community. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's important I keep our people here so we can continue to do that. You know, we, we've seen many storms. You in a different role for some of the other storms. Then you became sheriff and you won the news desk with me, I think, seven times <laughs> last year for, uh, for storms. But that was just practice for what rolled over us with Ida. But now, now you really have a clear understanding of what these storms are like. And I, I would venture to say, next time you come on the news desk and tell people you got to leave the parish, they're probably going to take you a little more serious. Well, I, I would hope so. Look, look, nobody ever wants to leave their home. And I understand it. I get it. And there are several reasons. One, that's their property. They work hard to, um, for their homes. They work hard for their families. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to leave. And I mean, I think we set a very, very uh, clear message when it came to looting on, a pro on their property. We're going to handle that. And I'll continue to handle that any time we ever deal with something like this. We're going to deal with that with our iron fist. I'm not going to tolerate a looter in this parish, especially for the good people that is working hard. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I have to keep my people working hard to protect it. Mm -hmm. And it's important I keep that momentum and keep our people working. And when they suffer devastation themselves, they got to still keep working. So it's important we're able to take care of them, do what we have to do to continue that momentum in protecting people's property. And I hope they'll build a little confidence if we ever come to a something like this again and they needed to evacuate, they're going to do it with a little more confidence and knowing that we're back here to protect them. Sheriff, I want to thank you on behalf of the parish. you have really rallied as a unit, along with all law enforcement, but to see that trailer city behind you just shows me where your heart is, and I know those deputies appreciate it. Look, I couldn't be more proud of the work that they do every day. And even today in the tempo, we're keeping up and what we're doing, and they're working, and they're tirelessly working, and I can't be more proud of what these guys are doing to help our community. There you have it, the sheriff of Terrebonne Parish, Tim Saunier. Something uh, we don't see a whole lot. We don't see the sheriff having to build a city, 29 campers out here to take care of his deputies, but Ida taught us a lot of things we didn't know before. We have a lot more on the cleanup after Ida. We'll be right back.